our whole plan here today with CBMC is to honor Fresno Pacific University. Originally, we're going to honor and welcome to Fresno the new athletic director, Morgan Walker. Uh, he was not able to be here today because of a change in schedule. So we said, all right, we want to honor Fresno Pacific in any way we possibly can because this school does a lot. So we've asked our great friend, Dr. Joe Jones, and his wife, Yvette, to be our main speakers here today. And they're going to be speaking for about four hours. You're going to have dinner at 6 o'clock. <laughs> Did you hear that, Dr. Joe? you got four hours. Joe Jones, Ph.D., came to Fresno Pacific after serving several years as a vice rector of the Christian University in Pakistan. His prior 20 years plus in higher education included service as a provost at North Park University in Chicago and also a social scientist at Messiah College in Pennsylvania. And Joe and Yvette have been here in Fresno now for several years. What I've always liked about the two of them, they got involved with the community right from the start. They weren't afraid to go around and connect with people, and they've done that, and they've done a very good job of it, and they keep doing it. Dr. Joe has a BA and MA in psychology, a PhD in criminal justice, and uh, he has served on numerous boards and traveled extensively the aim of extending the influence of the kingdom of God through Christian higher education. So I want you to put your hands together and welcome up here Dr. Joe Jones and his wife, Yvette Jones. Come on up, both of you. Well, uh, we weren't sure what to talk about because we only have a few minutes because we want to make sure that we uh, uh, focus on uh, the uh, Center for Community Transformation. Mm -hmm. You have to understand in terms of some of our, our, our background, mm -hmm. at, at least my background. My uh, PhD is in justice, criminal justice. My concentration dissertation is in plan change. I did it in community development. You know, so I was a professor of justice and community development. And my PhD was all around John Perkins' organization, Christian mm -hmm. Community Development, and where I did nationwide studies on that. And so I started in this whole trend doing this PhD in that particular area. And each college that we would go to, we actually started those initiatives. We started centers and we started uh, institutes all about engaging the colleges in, in the community mm -hmm. and, and so forth. So you can imagine when I come to Fresno Pacific and I see what our CCT is, uh, mm -hmm. CCT is doing, you know, I said, this is what we've been trying to do. This is the maturity of what we've been trying to establish and, and so forth. So it really is characteristic of Fresno Pacific. It really is kind of the heart mm -hmm. of what Fresno Pacific is doing, even in other areas, even as we kind of follow, even though it's kind of stationed in the seminary. So I want to give time for that. Uh, but, uh, but just before I, I do that, you, you know about the institution. We've been here since 1944. Some of you still don't know where we are, <laughs> but you know about the institution. <laughs> yeah, I have people, oh, where is that all the time who've been here for 20 years uh, in that sense? Uh, but, but we are actually committed to this community. You know, when we actually first came, uh, several things that we actually saw. Uh, we walked into the administration building and we saw a sign said, uh, with, uh, 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 what is it? Uh, with God. All things are possible, or possibility happens here. Yeah. And I remember sitting down with the marketing people, and they said, yes, yes, this is what we've been looking at, and so forth. I said, so where's the scripture? I said, yeah, you know, so we actually started putting a scripture with God, all things are possible. And the reason for that, because our journey has been all things possible, where we've mm -hmm. seen God do miraculous things, put us in unusual places. Mm -hmm. We both have very challenging backgrounds. Most people are shocked in terms of the kind of places that we actually came from and the things that we've actually mm -hmm. overcome. Mm -hmm. And so when we actually came here, we had a, a real sense of call to actually engage the cultures the and serve the city. Mm -hmm. And if you read our literature and the things that we actually talk about, you know, well, what, uh, what, what our center is actually doing, mm -hmm. it's already doing that. But how do we actually have the university do it broadly. Mm -hmm. But the foundation of all of that, and I appreciate uh, uh, J.R. talking, the foundation of all of what we have actually have done has been prayer. Mm -hmm. And I think we as Christians kind of forget that. 
Well, we do a lot of doing, but we forget in terms of the foundation of what we're doing. Uh, my wife, Yvette, has a tremendous testimony. You, you all just say, oh, well, she's his wife, but she's been with Make-A-Wish Foundation, a CEO there, VPs. She's been senior administration. She's traveled with us. We've done marriage seminars uh, where all, all over the world. You know, mm -hmm. it, you know, we've preached in underground churches. I mean, all these type of things, mm -hmm. things that we could not even imagine mm -hmm. or dream of. Mm -hmm. But God has placed us in different places because of committing, listening to him. And you only hear God mm. when you spend the time yeah. in prayer, right. uh, in prayer. Mm -hmm. And so one of the things that we do, and I'll let my wife speak, but one of the things that we do, uh, uh, our, our cabinet meetings, uh, we don't just actually have a cursory prayer at the beginning of our cabinet meetings. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Prayer is part of the work, folks. It's part of the work. Yeah. You know, it's the most important part mm -hmm. of the work. Mm -hmm. And so we start our meetings actually with a devotional and with a time of prayer. When we actually meet with our counselor, you know, prayer is part of what we actually do. Mm -hmm. And if we expect anything to happen that would bring honor and glory to God, it's actually going to be founded in, in mm -hmm. prayer. Mm -hmm. You want to say something? Well, I'd like to share a, a favorite quote that um, this wonderful guy introduced me to of Oswald Chambers that said the, the, the prayer does not fit you for great works prayer is great work that's the work and we are the result of prayer I am a New Yorker I married a Southerner it was never to be even according to our family's religious beliefs because Catholics were we were not to marry Protestants and so with all the dynamics that the Lord used to bring us together was a result of prayer and prayer has become our life we don't know how not to pray and it's our power because we have to rely on God's will to be done through the gifts he has given us and so we don't take it lightly we try to tell our children who are in their 40s that husbands and wives that pray together stay together in the Lord and how vital it is to teach their children how to pray. And it really grieves my heart when I think of just our nation as a whole towards the attitude of prayer. Because you remember 9-11. Every billboard said pray. Pray for America. And the gap is empty because God says this if, if his people who are called by his name would just pray and so we are the result of prayer he is an answer to my prayers I had a list <laughs> that I knelt before the Lord and he did abundantly above what I asked or thought but I said, number one, Father, I want a man that fears you. And now I, I've enjoyed 41 years, going on 42. But prayer, if we can't leave you with anything else, if you haven't spent time praying, pray. If you've spent time praying, pray more. Because all that we've done, all that we've seen, Time doesn't permit us to share with you the power of prayer. But I would like to leave you with one story. When we were in Pakistan and the Lord gave the call to go, I didn't want to go. So I prayed about it. And, my, and I'm telling you a long story short. And I got changed. And I said, okay. He said, just remember those, those wedding vows that you patted yourself on the back for writing. From the book of Ruth, where thou goest, I will go. Ah, 
don't bow before God if you're not going to keep it. <laughs> and I thought, that was so long ago, you're going to hit me with that now? So I said, okay, Pakistan, here I come. What does a black African-American woman do in Pakistan? So I did research and all of that, and I went. And I went and I sat at a table with the lady that was grieved. And I asked her the cause of her grief. And she said, I'm pregnant. I said, okay, there's your husband right there. She said, I'm 47 years old and my child is 21. And I'm pregnant. I said, rejoice in the Lord. He causes the barren to, keep, to have children. He can restore your youth. She said, but I prayed for this child 21 years ago. I asked for another child. This is no joke. I said, but you know prayer doesn't have an expiration date? <laughs> Time means different to God than to us. And now she floods me with pictures of this little child. And so prayer has been the essence of who we are. A day doesn't go by that we don't wake up in the morning and we're praying together. We don't know how to survive without it. And I encourage you, pray for each other. And I love a statement that was saying, together, together what we could do in being the church just be Jesus' arms. Just be who he is to those around you. Sweetheart. Thank you. Imagine our, our, our first date together when we were sitting in Norfolk, Virginia, just on the bench. The first thing that we did together after mm. we talk and get to know each other. Well, actually, the first date was was it at McDonald's? We had a dollar and, yeah. and shared, and you shared a hamburger and a french fry. Yeah, couldn't yeah. afford anything else. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, but uh, the first real date, I guess official date, uh, you know, so we sat and we prayed together. Yeah, and sit down? Oh, uh, no. Or do you no, want no, me no. to stand beside you? <laughs> no, no, you're part of it. <laughs> Just earlier this year, just a couple of three, uh, three things, so you can actually see, because I think the impact of the university, I many of you all don't, uh, don't realize it uh, so often, but, uh, but I, I, yeah, most of you all don't know, about 97, 98% of our students are on scholarship. Yeah. So we really support, the, uh, really support this valley. And so that's uh, so important to us. And we actually have uh, what we call the Paragon Scholars. These are kind of the highest scholarship uh, students. You know, most of them have full rides and, and so forth. And of course, each year we kick off the year and we're invited to a, a, a dinner and we kind of hear students' testimonies. And I remember this, uh, this I fall, I, I turned to a, a young lady, I said, uh, I said, so what did you do? You know, she's a Paragon scholar. I mean, she's really smart. Mm -hmm. you know? I said, so what did you do this summer? Mm -hmm. I worked in the fields. That's what she does every summer. Mm -hmm. She works in the fields. Mm -hmm. you know, so, mm -hmm. so, so if you begin to understand in terms of what we actually provide, the other piece, you know, as a Christian university, this uh, it just actually just happened this year. So uh, a person came to me and actually told me the, uh, this story about a, a student who I have family committed to church. Yeah. And uh, uh, his mother especially, and he said that uh, for the first time that he actually opened and read the Bible was at Fresno Pacific University. We have a course that's a requirement. They have to take all undergraduate students, traditional students, have to take a couple of Bible courses to graduate. And, and out of his excitement about reading the Bible, he actually took it home to share it with his family, especially with his mother. And so it makes all the difference in the world. Yes, yeah, so we have five campuses, so we're all over the place. We're down in Bakersfield, Visalia, up in Merced, and of course you all know about our North Campus and so forth. A couple of years ago, we were actually having some uh, celebrations on each of those campuses, and, and different students would actually uh, testify. These are non-traditional students. Mm -hmm. And I remember a student, he got up and he actually began to share his testimony. He wanted us to hear it. 
And he said, uh, he said this, he said, uh, my class, we were actually had uh, uh, this Bible class that we had, and part of the class we were all supposed to go to church. But he had been putting it off and putting it off. And so it was the other students trying to encourage him, we have to go to church because you had to do some kind of mm-hmm. annotation and all that. And uh, so he just kept pushing it off and pushing it off. And so, so not the professor, but the students, because he had to do it before the end of the semester. So several other students agreed to actually go with him. Because he went there, here he was standing before us and saying, he said, because of that, he said, I gave my life to Christ. He said, I knew, you know, I had walked away a long time ago. And now he, he, he was not only, he, he was testifying of the changes that God had made in his life, but now he and his family, he and his family were now actively involved in church. This is the outcome the results of the things that we do. You say, but it's all still uh, based uh, in, in prayer. You know, we get a lot of criticism from a lot of little stuff. I hear them all the time, every day, mm-hmm. if not every other day. You know, somebody has something that they can point their finger uh, at us. And uh, you know, to be frank, quite often, it's usually people in the church. But we ask, just as we do, and as we really are commanded to do, mm-hmm to pray and intercede for one another. Yes. And so if you don't remember anything else that Yvette and I have said, you say, this is the one thing that I think is so important, yes. is that you commit your time in prayer mm-hmm. because it's there where you begin to learn to hear the voice of God. It's mm-hmm. there where you begin to gain a whole reverence uh, a submission to God. Uh, what we hear, uh, you know, what we begin to talk about, a reverent submission to God. Not just, you know, you said, I but a reverent submission mm-hmm. to God. I obey God because I honor and I respect them. I have a fear and, uh, uh, for Him. Mm-hmm. And so that only comes uh, through prayer. Mm-hmm.